Okay, good morning everyone. It's fantastic to see so many people turn up here for the campaign launch for Get Em Home. It is truly incredible to see so many people turn up and something incredible in this community. In times of need, this paper just comes together. It's amazing. So I'd like to introduce a few speakers today. And the first is going to be Trudy Harrison, who's the Conservative candidate for Copeland. Trudy has wholeheartedly supported the campaign and has bravely brought it up very recently in the House of Commons. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Trudy Harrison. Thank you very much, everybody. This all started when we successfully raised some money in our local community in Whitehaven for the Women Out West Centre, founded by the wonderful Rachel Holiday. Rachel asked me to go along and meet with some women, and Victoria was one of those women. She started to tell me her story, and I have to say, I'm among my daughters are 16, 18, 19, and 21. Listening to this story, this account, I just thought, no, this can't be right. There must be another side to this. I just can't believe this is happening in my community. Now, at the time, I wasn't Victoria's MP um, because I was the Copeland MP and Victoria lived in the Workington constituency. So, I actually thought, don't get involved, Trudy. There's always two sides to every story. But as I was driving home, I thought to myself, to have your child taken away from you and only be able to see her in a contact centre, maybe once a fortnight, often not, surely you must have done something so bad that you actually would have been in jail. You wouldn't have been able to walk in off the street and talk to me. And then I got back in touch with Victoria and I asked her, are you able to spend time with your nieces and nephews, other children? Yeah, I am. She can go anywhere in the world with other children, look after other children overnight. As a fully qualified nanny, she could be paid to look after other children. And that was really when I thought, this is fundamentally wrong. There's something so seriously wrong here with our system. And that's when I learned about the family court system. Because as I started to make inquiries with social workers, with Cumbria County Council, and in Parliament with the Department for Education, I was constantly blocked. An MP constantly blocked, even with my parliamentary privilege. I was warned against speaking out. I was warned against taking a side. But I always introduce myself, and I am pathetically emotional. I make no apology for that as most importantly a mum to my four daughters. And if this could happen to Victoria, it could happen to any one of us mums, because Victoria's only crime that I can see is being the victim of an abusive partner and then taking steps to protect her daughter. And I would do the same. And I'm sure the vast majority of mums would go to the end of the earth to protect their children. But somewhere, somehow, the system has become absolutely shattered because Victoria actually isn't an isolated case. We've learned of many more mums whose only crime was being a victim of a perpetrator. And often these mums have actually sought help, they've fled the family home. After years of abuse, they've taken the bold and courageous decision to seek help only for the state to decide they would continue the punishment in the worst possible way by removing their own children. So I've decided to get off the fence and it's a highly political time for us at the moment. We've got other politicians and wannabe politicians in the room who are making that same decision. Do we stand by and take the safe route, thinking there must be two sides, or do we actually take a stand and support hashtag get M home? And that's what I've decided to do, and I encourage everybody else in a position of power, and that every single one of you here in this audience today 
and throughout this community because you know the family, your voices are actually far more persuasive than that of a politician who could be accused of playing political games with this awful tragedy. So I do encourage you to campaign and speak out and stand up when things are fundamentally wrong, but please do it on the right side of the law. The Children's Act is there for a reason, to protect children and particularly looked after children. So please do this on the right side of the law. Work with me and others, work with the fantastic organisations that we have up and down the country and change the system so that the family court system is not shrouded in secrecy. And when things need an extra look at, it is possible to do without finding tens of thousands of pounds for an appeal because that's the system that we've got now. It is an elitist system where only the most affluent can go back to court and have their case heard again. On a happier note, this is a wonderful community. Just being here this morning has really raised my spirits and I know that your support must mean so much to Victoria's family. So please dry those tears, I can see them in the room, and find it within you to fight. Because we're not just doing this for one family. There are far too many families, particularly women, as is to say, who are going through this right now, having their children taken away. I think there are 130 looked after children in Copeland and 160 in Allerdale. Now this isn't to demonise foster carers who do an incredible job and adoptive parents who are the salt of the earth in many cases. And some children, absolutely, it's right and proper that they're given another chance in another family. But I don't believe for one moment that that is the answer for this family. And listening to the accounts of how this child being taken away has had, had an impact on the wider family is just absolutely heartbreaking. So, I'm going to stop speaking now. I'm here for the rest of the morning. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the dancing, but I'm going to hand over to the next speaker and um, I want to thank you all for having the courage to be in this room. I know that some people said they didn't want to be seen being in the room because it might have caused them a problem with their job. And I think that is just testament to the broken system that we have when you can't challenge when something doesn't make sense. And if you're ever told, like I have been many times, there are two sides to this story. Please say, go on then, tell me what the other side is. I'm all ears, because I have yet to find out what the other side looks like. Thank you. Thanks, Judy, that was incredible. So our next speaker, I'd like to introduce you to Mike Starkey. Mike is the elected mayor of Copeland, and has a few words to say and with thoughts and feelings about Cumbria County Council. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Good morning, everybody. I'll, uh, I'll just give a bit of background on you know, why I come to be here and why I'm uh, speaking to you today. You know, it's a very uh, impassioned speech uh, from Truby there. And, you know, what I can tell you is, is, is truly is not probably the least political parliamentarian um, in Parliament. She, she is very much a, a people first MP and, uh, and puts political bias and spirit to one side to make sure that she represents the best interests of the people all of the time. And I say that in every element of the work, um, working quite closely with her on a, on a very regular basis. You know, I guess the, you know, the angle that I'm coming from, we'd have been in Copeland. When I was elected back in 2015, um, you know, one of the, the, the key issues uh, uh, for me was well, the social issues that existed in the West and, and domestic abuse is very much at the, uh, at the top of the problems that we have to deal with and that we've invested in quite heavily uh, in providing uh, you know, a dedicated officer and some of the stories that I'm going to hear are really troubling. These particular cases, you know, one of the real worries for me is that when you look in West Cumbria, uh, this problem is disproportionate uh, population wise to other 
you know, I'm I'm not familiar um, with the, the, all of the details of these cases. So, you know, I've spoken, um, you know, in recent years to, to Rachel Holliday of Women Not West, who did a fantastic job, uh, but it's a relatively new facility. Um, and, you know, I've obviously been aware of uh, Trudy's involvement more than recent weeks, and I've uh, spoken with her this week. Should talk about the role of the system. Um, you know, you've seen a lot of press coverage um, over the four years where you know, the, the political system that leads to the organisational structure uh, that creates these type of situations is completely broken. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not seeing anything now that I, that I haven't said by the Cumbria, Cumbria County Council. Children's services and adult social care should be in the hands of professional and qualified people, not in the hands of politicians who've got no experience and, and not the right skill sets uh, to be dealing in such sensitive uh, areas. So, you know, I've uh, been probably the most vocal local politician on reforming the local government to serve the communities that they're there to represent better than what they currently do. Um, Obviously, those sort of headlines support um, Rachel Holliday uh, to see me and, and to start raising some of these issues. Um, you, know, it, 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 you know, without knowing the detail, and, and you know, I can't pretend to know uh, either side of these stories in detail, but there's enough trends, uh, there's enough patterns, uh, and, and the statistics to cause a real concern and real worry, and, and to tell you that there's a, a Turnout on a Saturday morning, um, you know, in, in the town. Uh, we, we'll do what we can to try and address and put right some of the wrongs and we can improve the overall structure uh, to make sure a long term that meetings like this don't have to happen. Thank you very much.